The 805 Focus is brought to you in part by Nonprofit Connect. Nonprofit Connect provides superior leadership tools and resources so nonprofit leaders and board members can make valuable decisions to move their organization forward to a sustainable and vibrant future. More information on services online at nonprofitconnect.org. Welcome to 805 Focus. I'm Dr. Cinder Sinclair with Nonprofit Connect, and we will be bringing you the latest on your favorite nonprofits. So get ready to be inspired. As you can see, we have a very special guest today. It's Charlie the Red-Tailed Hawk, and he is from the Santa Barbara Zoo. We also have Charlie's friend, Rachel Ra Richeson, and Rachel is the Director of Animal Care at the Santa Barbara Zoo. Welcome, Charlie and Rachel. Thank you so much for having us today. It's so fun to be here. Oh, gosh. Charlie is so handsome Isn't and he? so calm. He is. Charlie is one of our ambassador animals at the Santa Barbara Zoo. He lives behind the scenes, oh. uh, but he comes out for uh, animal experiences um, many times. Um, and he's been at the zoo for almost 23 years. Really? So he is very good at his job of being an ambassador for the wildlife around us. Good job, Charlie. 23. No, I would never have guessed. Look how smooth your feathers are. Doesn't look a day over 10, does he? No, no. <laughs> So, tell us more about Charlie. Okay, well, Charlie is a local resident as well. So, he was found as a chick on the ground, and a very helpful person took him to a local rehabilitation center where he was reared with every intent to release him oh. to the wild. Mm -hmm. But in order to be releasable, he had to show signs that he would uh, take care of himself and Charlie never developed the desire to hunt for food for himself. Oh. So um, he was deemed non-releasable by a veterinarian at that time. And then he went through some training and came to the zoo just a, about two years later. So he's 25 uh, years old now, and he's been at the zoo for about 23 years. Gosh. Well, Charlie, we're, we're glad you made your way here to yep. the zoo. and. He, here today. So he gets to participate in a lot of animal programs um, and experiences. Um, you know, we have wonderful educational programs and Charlie can visit school groups or um, after a scout troop has spent the night at the zoo in one of our overnight safaris, he will come out in the morning and greet them. Oh. And uh, he's, he's been doing that. Um, and, and, you know, all of our animals at the zoo are ambassadors, even if they don't come out of their habitats. And we think it's so important that people get to know animals and the wildlife around them so that they can respect them and respect yeah, the environment. Right. So you say he comes out to greet them. What does that look like? Do you bring him out like that on your hand? I do, or? yeah. So when he's in his enclosure, he doesn't have all this fancy equipment on him. Um, and he gets a lot of choice and control over moving throughout his entire holding space. Mm. Um, but when he does come out, he has um, the um, the oh. lead strings on. Okay. Um, and uh, so these are called anklets and Jess's, uh, and this is all falconry equi equipment, oh, okay. um, very commonly used in, in falconry. And um, he used to fly. Oh, <laughs> he's gonna show us right there. Ooh, he's showing he off, did, I he did. He did for many years, he would fly in our program, so he is fully capable of flying. Oh. But he, uh, over time, as, um, you know, I call it his retirement, and I think he's entitled to some, you know, slow and easy days. Um, and so say. he just kind of showed us that he didn't want to fly anymore. He didn't really oh. want to work anymore. Oh. <laughs> so um, he's perfectly happy to come out like this and greet people. 
Um, and you know, he also is a wonderful bird for our keeper staff. So oh. our animal care professionals, um, sometimes um, when they start with us at the zoo, they don't have the experience of handling a hawk on their hand. Of course. And Charlie is such a pro that he is so good at teaching and teaching helping, helping people learn. Yep. In fact, 15 years ago when I arrived at the zoo as an animal keeper, he was one of the first birds I worked with oh. and um, at Santa Barbara Zoo. And um, I learned to hold hawks and other birds, uh, raptors on my hands um, like this from Charlie. Good job, Charlie, teaching yeah. Rachel how to take care of you. That's a wonderful little stretch he just did. So, oh, is that right? Yeah, he's very intent and focused, uh, but very comfortable. Yeah, because yeah. you take him out in different places all yeah, the time. So we do. So is he calm because you take him out a lot? Or because he's uh, a little elderly? I think he's calm because he is um, very comfortable being an ambassador, very comfortable being with me. I've had the honor of working with him for 15 years oh, um, while I've been at the Santa Barbara Zoo. So um, like I said, he, he's a pro and um, he's, he's always happy to show off. So tell us some things we might not know about what's involved in animal care at mm. the zoo. Well, it's... Um, we're a big department at the zoo, so yes. we have nearly 30 people working in our animal care and health department. So we have two full-time veterinarians and veterinary technicians to provide year-round 24-7 care to all of our animals, oh. whether uh, it's our veterinarian oh, pulling blood from a tarantula to assess its health, or um, doing an exam for um, Pauline, our one and a half year old African lion. Oh God! Um, just got her first health check um, a few weeks ago. So we have, um, we have a full veterinary team, we have a full nutrition team. So we mm -hmm. have an animal nutritionist who's focused on giving our animals the highest quality uh, food. Um, and that's all USDA grade, um, you know, animal, I'm sorry, it's all um, people grade food. Um, but we don't, we don't eat their food. We, we leave that to the animals. <laughs> um, and then we have animal care um, at keeper professionals, and this is their full-time job uh, to take day-to-day -day care. And we do things like provide enriching experiences for animals in their enclosures so they mm. can use their bodies and their minds. And we try and elicit natural behavior that they might um, do in the wild. Um, we we do feed them. We do a whole lot of cleaning, so oh. lots of scrubbing, lots of raking, yeah. um, and then uh, we also do welfare assessments on all of our mm. animals mm -hmm. to ensure that they are getting the highest standard of welfare, because um, we really believe in these animals living um, healthy and happy and fulfilled lives. Yeah. So, give me an example when you say experiences in their um, yeah so um, let's talk about um, uh, the uh, Amr leopards okay. so Marta is um, almost a year old mm -hmm. she's a cub that was born at the Santa Barbara Zoo and they're critically endangered so it was an, an incredible success to have a healthy cub um, and she lives with her mom Ajax in the Amr leopard habitat and um, we want to ensure that they have experiences and opportunities to do things that they might in the wild. We know they're not in the wild. Yeah. Um, but what we can do is they come in so that the keepers can go into the habitat, so they go into holding enclosures, and keepers go in and set up um, maybe a food item on a spring, uh -huh. so um, or you know, hanging, so that um, Marta goes and then she jumps and she pulls at it with her teeth, but then maybe it springs oh, away from her, wow. and then she has to go um, go after it and pull on it and work on it. So it's not just putting food down on the floor yeah, for them, but yeah. creating this experience around eating that is, um, that is enriching for them. So they use their minds and their bodies. And that's a response that comes naturally Absolutely. to that particular animal. Absolutely. We don't have to teach that response. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Hi, handsome. <laughs> okay, Did you have something to say? Yeah, Charlie, I think it's your turn. <laughs> he says, yeah, what about me? What about me? You know, what's interesting about red-tailed hawks is um, in 
movies, their call is often used in place. Uh, if you see a bald eagle or a golden eagle flying or soaring, mm. or they show an open canyon with a bird call, um, that that call is very often a red-tailed hawk call. Oh, gosh. Yeah, because <laughs> they have that majestic long call. <laughs> so animal care, I would yeah. imagine you work with the education department, too, to help visitors and school children and whatever learn about caring for animals? Absolutely, yeah, we get to work with all of the different departments uh, at the zoo and you know we work with education um, to uh, share our expertise so uh, animal keepers will get the opportunity to share their stories mm. with, uh, with different groups of all ages and um, you know, we also get to do field work with conservation and science. We get to go out and work with California condors, mm -hmm. helping um, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service crew do health checks on wild birds, or um, perhaps we're um, out, you know, doing counting monarch, monarch butterflies or wow. spotting sea otters. So we have a lot of opportunities uh, because the Santa Barbara Zoo really focuses on conservation in our own backyard. We can um, spare the resources for people. You know, they're not um, going across the world for two weeks. Yeah, they're sure. going out into the field for a day and yeah. counting uh, monarchs, which, oh. you know, are such an incredibly important pollinator in our, in our environment. Yeah. <laughs> And so a person can uh, be a volunteer at the zoo yes. and you can teach them how to, th the animal care. Yeah. Do you want to come learn how to be an animal sure. keeper? Yeah. Tell me how that works. Yeah. So we have a, it's called a keeper aid program. Okay. It's okay. kind of a piece of our volunteer program that's managed by our, our education and human resources department. And uh, they work side by side. After some training, they work side by side with our keepers, and um, you know, the longer they're there, the more they get uh, the opportunities they get to to learn and work side by side. Um, and you know, we've hired many of our volunteers into our oh, our really? animal keeper team, um, and. You know, I think a lot of people wonder how to get started. And myself, I got started um, many, many years ago as a volunteer. Ah. I started as a volunteer and um, I, I worked my way through college working at another zoo. Oh gosh. So um, I had a lot, of, uh, a lot of fun doing that. And, and I love to see people, people doing that as well. And our, our commitment, our time commitment, we only ask for four hours mm. uh, once a week and people oh. can potentially volunteer more than that. Yeah. But we try and make it doable. We understand that most people have to work as well yeah. um, as potentially going to school. Um, but we have people of all ages who've joined oh, our team really? as keeper aides and, and it's, they're invaluable. We could not do the work we do without them. So when you think, okay, animal care, when you think of all the different animals that you have there at the zoo, which one do you think is the, like maybe the most challenging to take care of or the most surprising mm -hmm. or? I think, I think it depends on the criteria you're using. Yeah. So, um, you know, you might think a giraffe is challenging. Um, everything's really big, right? Yeah. Lots of heavy lifting, lots of breaking, <laughs> large, large enclosure, large, large holdings. Um, and uh, we tra train them using positive reinforcement because similar to horses, we have to trim their hooves. Oh. Um, and so we train them to come into holding and put their foot up on a block and expose the end and oh, let us okay. um, clean, clean out their hoof and do hoof treatments. Um, so, you know, that's challenging in one way. Mm -hmm. um, and in another way, working with a venomous snake, you know, oh, is challenging sure, and takes sure. a lot of extra training, <laughs> guess, yeah. very careful, close attention. So I think, um, you know, we have people who specialize in all different sorts of animals and we mm -hmm. um, absolutely need that different expertise yeah. because it's so different, yeah. you know, working with different types of animals. Right, I can only imagine. Yeah. And so a person can go on your website and, and find out how to be a volunteer or, or maybe even they can find out all the 
opportunities. Absolutely. And decide what they want to look into. Absolutely. Yeah, there's, yeah, there are open positions um, at the zoo. Every summer we need, um, you know, a lot of people to help us with increased um, attendance at the zoo. Um, and we, we absolutely love that, you know, bring on a, a whole new cohort of um, team members to experience the zoo firsthand yeah. um, from all sorts of different departments. Yeah, and while they're on the website looking for volunteer opportunities, they could push that Donate Now button oh, and they could make a financial that, contribution. That would be wonderful. Yeah, so there's a lot of ways to, to give. Um, you know, there's even, even $5, mm -hmm. it, you know, helps the zoo uh, with their conservation work. You know, we, we do what we do because we love animals um, and we want to see their wild counterparts thrive and be healthy and have healthy environments. And um, a good portion of our, the zoo's resources goes towards those efforts, um, not just on site, but off site as well. Yeah. In, in the field, in the wild, in the beautiful Santa Barbara County and neighboring counties here. And members, they, a person can uh, sign up to be a member online. They can, they can. And a portion of their membership goes straight to conservation. They can feed the giraffe and, and the money that they give to feed the giraffe goes straight to our conservation efforts. So that's, it's, that's you know, really we great. want people to feel good about coming to the zoo and to know that, um, you know, the resources that they're spending, um, you know, they are going to a good cause yeah. and that we're being respectful and responsible with, um, with what people give. You know, I'm so impressed with the with the complexity of what goes on behind the scenes that a lot of times regular visitors might not see or notice. I just really appreciate that. Yeah, um, I think uh, one of the things that I love is that every day is different. And um, that speaks to uh, being behind the scenes. Um, and I think, um, you know, my day is always a little different. Sometimes I'm working on um, you know, text for a permit, you know, yeah. all, uh, most of our animals need permits to hold them. Uh, California state permits and uh, state and federal permits. Um, and some of them are down to um, specific people are permitted to do certain work. Mm -hmm. um, and part of my job um, over the last 10 years was making sure that we were in compliance with all of our rules and permit regulations. Yeah. Um, and so there's always something a little different. Maybe I'm working on a permit. Um, maybe I'm, you know, I, I get the joy of working with people now, not just animals, right? So yeah. I have a wonderful team and uh, part of my job is to help them along in their career and, and make sure everyone has the resources they need to take care of our animals. Yeah as best they can. Yes, and so, now I understand that our Santa Barbara Zoo is one of only something like 236 zoos in, what is it, North America, out of 10,000, that is, well, how do you say it, accredited, accredited. with the Association of Zoo something. And aquariums, you've got and aquariums. it. Hey. AZA, accredited by the Association of Zoos and Aquariums. Yeah, if you, if you think about uh, how many USDA um, permits there are for holding mammals, um, you know, there, there are, there's over 10,000, um, but there's only 236 accredited members of the Association of Zoos and Aquariums. We hold ourselves to an incredibly high standard. And, um, you know, part of those accrediting requirements are the conservation activities, mm -hmm. the educational activities, yeah. the incredible animal welfare and animal health, all coming together to um, provide incredible guest services uh, to, to our guests. Um, and it's at the forefront of our mind at, at all times. Um, so we, we're very proud of what we do. Yes, um, as you should be. And I, I'm very proud to be you know, a part of the Santa Barbara Zoo team. Yeah. It's, it's a great place to be. So Rachel and Charlie, we have about a minute left. Is there anything else you'd like the audience to know? 
Oh, well, um, I would love to say come and visit us. All right. Um, come to the zoo. And, you know, even if you've never been there, if you've been a longtime Santa Barbara resident and you haven't been to the zoo, come and check it out. And, uh, you know, you can always let us know what you think. Um, it's it's a wonderful place uh, to, to share. Um, and we have beautiful sweeping views yes. of, of, the, of Santa Barbara, both the, the hills and the ocean. Um, and so, you know, you can bring a picnic, you can bring yeah. some food in, have a birthday party with us. Oh, nice. um, we're happy to share um, people's fun occasions with them as well. That is great. Yeah. Good, well, I bet now there's gonna be a lot of people coming to check out Charlie. Yep. And remember, he's behind the scenes, but you yeah. can check him out, um, you know, walking around with our keepers sometimes, yeah. or you can ask about him as well. Oh, yeah. all right. Yeah, we'll always, you know, if you ask about him, we'll let you know when he's coming out next. Well, Rachel and Charlie, thank you so much for being with us today. You're very welcome. And telling welcome. us this wonderful story. And uh, thank you for being with us on 805 Focus, and we'll see you next time.